Today, I'll pre be presenting our 20-year study of password reuse at the University of Chicago. This work was done with my colleagues while we were all at the University of Chicago. Despite their many disadvantages, passwords remain widely used as a form of authentication. One way that many users cope with needing to have passwords for so many accounts is by reusing these passwords. They can do this either directly or with small predictable modifications. Unfortunately, attackers are aware that people reuse passwords and can use this to their advantage. If an attacker can get their hands on the credentials from any of the hundreds of services that have suffered a data breach in recent years, they can attempt to log into other accounts using the same credentials. If they succeed for a given account, depends on if the password was reused and any other security measures the other service might have in place. At the University of Chicago, UChicago for short, when you create a new password, one of the requirements is that you cannot use a password that you've previously used for your account. This means that the university keeps a password history database that contains the hash of every password that has been used at the university over the past 20 years, along with additional information. For this project, we collaborated with UChicago's IT security and identity management teams to create a two-part study. In the first part, we measured reuse at the university, taking advantage of the password history database. And in the second part, we surveyed a subset of the users that we had identified as having reused a password for their account. We started off with a list of just under 228,000 usernames for university affiliates. We then searched for credentials from other services that could belong to those UChicago users. These credentials came from two types of sources. The first we call individual service breaches. These are just data breaches reported to be from a single website. They can be obtained, by example, by an attacker stealing the service's password database by carrying out an SQL injection attack. Our other sources were breach compilations. These are just sets of individual service breaches that have been bundled together and are typically what is being referred to when you hear people say something like, one billion passwords have appeared for sale online. We looked through these sources for, university, for passwords associated with university usernames. For the example, username Nissanoff, nissanoff at uchicago.edu is a university email, so we say it matches. We also include other types of matches that have mostly been ignored in prior literature. If the username was different, we exclude it. Once we had identified those credentials, we further cleaned them, which included things like cracking hashes. To account for the predictable modifications that users make to their passwords, we use several different credential tweaking methods identified in prior research and used by the password cracking community to generate additional similar passwords. Attackers aren't limited to only looking at reused passwords. They may also want to take advantage of the fact that a lot of users will choose the same common passwords. For comparison, we took the most frequently occurring passwords from the LinkedIn data breach and guessed them for all users. When necessary, we manually modified them to be related to the university rather than LinkedIn. We also only wanted to guess things that had the chance to be valid. If the password did not meet any of the university's password policies, it was discarded. We then sent the username and password guesses alongside metadata about how each guess was generated to the IT department, who then compared these guesses to the password history database. For all of the correct guesses, the IT department returned the metadata without the username and password and added information that they had, such as when the password was valid. If we guessed a user's current password, they were alerted to the issue and given two weeks to change their password before their account was locked. Users with accounts that had a password we could guess from the past three years were sent a courtesy email alerting them about the past vulnerability. After the notifications and password resets took place, we conducted a survey of 40 impacted users. The survey was customized to show the participants details about the sources of data that allowed us to guess their password. All recruitment and compensation was carried out by the IT department. Given the sensitivity of account security, we carefully designed this protocol, which was approved by our institution's IRB, 
in collaboration with various stakeholders across our university over the course of nearly five years. Our contacts in the IT department were the only people that ever accessed the password history database, which they already had access to as part of their job. As a result, the academic researchers never learned which users we were able to guess the passwords for or who took the survey. And by forcing password resets, we prevent an attacker from being able to exploit those passwords. In total, we are able to correctly guess 12,247 passwords based on password reuse. From those passwords, we are able to guess at least one password for 4.5% of all users, regardless of if we had a guess, 6.5% of users that we made any guess for, and then this percentage dramatically increases to 32% if we look at users where we found a password associated with a uchicago.edu email in a data breach. Those credentials are a lot more likely to have been used by university affiliate since the owner of taylor at uchicago.edu might not be the same person as the person who owns taylor at gmail.com. Of our over 12,000 correct guesses, 3,618 were currently valid at the university. There were a lot of data breaches that contributed to our correct guesses, but LinkedIn, Chegg, LiveJournal, Dropbox, MySpace, and 11 of the breach compilations each bootstrapped over 500 correct guesses. We also see some interesting trends when we look at the number of accounts with passwords we were able to guess over time. In this graph, the line goes up when we guess a password for a user and goes down when that password gets changed. The blue line represents guesses made based on password reuse and the magenta line represents common passwords. The vertical purple lines represent changes to the university's password policy. First, we can see that the number of accounts using reused passwords is much higher than the number of accounts using common passwords at any given time. And when we look at the blue line, we see that the number of vulnerable accounts due to password reuse increases until late 2014 when it starts dropping out. This coincides with the change to the password policy, making the minimum password length 12 characters instead of eight for new passwords. These reused passwords seem to stay stable for many years, with 6.2 years being the median length of time our correct guesses stayed in use. Reused passwords can stay valid for a long time even after similar credentials appear in a data breach. At the time of the LinkedIn data breach, there were 1,415 active UChicago accounts with similar credentials to those in the data breach. It took seven and a half years for that number to be cut in half. On September 30th, 2019, 134 of the UChicago accounts with passwords that we were able to guess were forced to reset their passwords due to sus suspicious activity on their accounts. It turns out that every single one of these passwords could be guessed using information found in the Chegg data breach, which had become public just a few days earlier. And for those of you that don't know, Chegg is a popular homework help and textbook rental website. This wasn't an isolated event. We saw many instances where the IT department reset a large number of passwords due to suspicious activity. We find that passwords were often created at the university before they appeared in a data breach. Many of our correct guesses were no longer active when the data breach occurred, meaning those accounts may not have ever been vulnerable in practice. Credential checking services like Have I Been Pwned, which UChicago did enable in late 2019, are typically employed when users create passwords and can then only catch passwords created after they show up in a data breach. Unfortunately, Doing this misses correct, correctly guessed passwords that were created before appearing publicly in data breach, but remain valid even after the data breach occurs. We also found what appears to be an interaction between the affiliation of users and the data breaches that allowed us to guess their passwords. For example, 41.4% of the students for whom we correctly guessed a password used a password similar to one we found in the Chegg data breach. While this was only true, for 2.2% of the faculty for whom we had at least one correct guess. Again, Chegg is a textbook rental and homework help site. And we also see the opposite relationship when we looked at the LinkedIn data breach. Out of all of our guesses, most were found in plain text in at least one data breach, but 14.7 of our guesses 
percent of our guesses were only found as hashes. Similarly, while many passwords were found verbatim in a data breach, tweaking the passwords did yield almost as many correct guesses. And now for just some quick high-level takeaways from the survey. Of the users who had to reset their password, many knew the password they for were forced to reset was one that they had reused on another site. And while over half of survey participants knew they had non-university credentials included in a data breach, many were unaware that they were affected by the data breaches or breach compilations that had actually allowed us to guess their password. Going one step further, some participants didn't even know they had an account on the breach service. Lastly, for some recommendations for organizations. A lot of the accounts we identified as having been vulnerable were associated with users that probably weren't actively interacting with their accounts. So finding ways of expiring accounts could decrease some latent risk to an organization. Credential checking when passwords are created isn't enough and retrospective checking could help identify reused credentials before they appear in data breaches. Created before they appear in data breaches. Checking high-risk data breaches when they become public is important, considering how quickly things like the Chegg data breach were exploited. And finally, if an organization is worried about motivated attackers doing the extra work to look for things beyond verbatim reuse of plain text passwords in major data breaches is important. Thank you so much for listening. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you.